Hey everyone, Chris Kroll here, Managing Editor of Solar Builder with another episode of Solar Distancing. Uh, we have been describing all sorts of ins and outs of Solar Plus storage, kind of getting back to the basics of how to do things. Um, but today's topic was uh, submitted by our guest today, uh, who is, let me see, Jeff McAndrew, Director of Sales and Clean Energy for uh, at Generac. Hey there, Jeff. Hey there, Chris, how are you? Good. So, you know, a lot of the topics we've had, I, I'm somewhat dangerous in, in terms of like, I, I know the basics of what we're talking about, but th this topic, power zoning, um, wasn't something I was familiar with. And I tried to Google it to have to at least be somewhat smart. Couldn't even find it on Google. So it sounds like this is maybe a, a Generac special here. And I'm kind of just leaving the floor open to you to explain to me what exactly is power zoning. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Chris. So you know, historically, PV inverters were, were what we would say string inverters. They had built-in uh, shading optimization uh, through MPPTs and maximum PowerPoint tracking devices that were built into the inverter. And then with, uh, with the rise of solar edge and end phase, there was sort of a shift to module level power electronics, um, you know, under the promise that you would, you would develop or generate more energy over the course of a, a day, a month, a year by optimizing at the individual module level. And with the power cell, uh, we, find ourself, we find ourselves in the best of both worlds here, where as opposed to putting power electronics on each individual module, what we do is we'll power zone modules by putting a, a grouping of PV modules in the same orientation on an array. So think about this. I mean, in most situations, uh, average PV array size anywhere from 16 to, to 32 panels. In most cases, those PV modules are not one panel standing by themselves uh, on their own orientation in the array. In most cases, you already have groupings of you know, six, eight uh, modules. Maybe you have eight modules in the east, 16 facing south, and eight facing west. Well, with power zoning, what we do is we, we group together a series generally of roughly eight modules, and we do optimization on that eight modules. Because if you have eight modules in the same orientation on an array, you know, unless you've got you know, two or three chimneys blocking the PV modules at different times throughout the day, there's no reason to put power electronics on each individual module. Mm -hmm. So when we say power zoning, we're grouping together uh, a, a series of modules and, and applying maximum PowerPoint tracking uh, to that group of modules. That would be power zoning. Okay, yeah, I mean, that kind of makes sense to me. Um, is there also a, it also sounds like it'd be easier or like there'd be fewer, um, less costs involved in avoiding putting that many components at the module level up on the roof and just kind of knocking it out uh, in those power zone sections? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's really two factors here. There's the cost of the initial equipment, uh, which can sometimes be reduced. You're putting in fewer power electronics, right? You pay more per optimizer, but but you're using one optimizer for eight panels. So there's there's some hardware savings there. There's some labor savings there in terms of uh, install cost. There's uh, liability risk savings just because your technicians are on the roof for a shorter period of time. But probably most importantly, Chris, it's that, look, in, in the case of a 30-panel array, you're getting away with four power electronics on the roof instead of, call it, 30 microinverters or 30 optimizers. And, you know, every computer that you put on a roof that in, in some states are, is going to get up to, um, you know, 140 degrees Fahrenheit uh, is a risk to, to the customer system running at, you know, full capacity. Um, and anytime there's a problem with one of those devices, you know, the installer's on the hook to come out and replace it. So our concept is let's maximize the amount of energy that we generate uh, while simultaneously reducing the amount of hardware on the roof. That seems like a good uh, plan to me. Um, is there, uh, I, I guess, for anyone still worried about shade mitigation, um, is there any, you know, factors in terms of stuff you should be avoiding or maybe when optimizers will still be more beneficial than doing the, the power zoning, like, you know, making sure it's most effective? Yeah, so the thing is, you can actually connect anywhere between 60 volts open circuit to 420. So eight panels is, is on the higher end. In some cases, we could do nine panels, but we can also do as few as two. So if you are planning to, to put just, you know, two, three, four modules on a west-facing uh, west roof, 
then you can still use one of our devices. The only time that you're gonna have an advantage with module level power electronics is if you have a lot of places where, where one panel is gonna get a lot of shading on a daily basis. And candidly, if that's the case, you might not wanna put a PV module there. Sure, yeah, <laughs> that kind of makes sense. This one's gotta hit it, right? Um, all right, well, very good. So this is a kind of a new thing you guys are maybe gonna be promoting out there. Is there any place where I, you know, someone watching this could send to find more info on kind of exactly how you're going about this? Yeah, for sure. Generac.com slash clean energy. Cool. Straightforward. All right. Well, hey, thanks again for taking the time, Jeff. All right. Sir. Thanks, man. Talk soon. Yep. Until next time, stay safe, stay away, but go solar.